Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, we're talking about Nintendo Switch, Batocera, RetroArch, PlayStation 6, and more. Let's get started. All right, we'll kick things off here talking about Emulation Station, an emulation front end for Windows, Mac, and Linux. And Emulation Station just got a massive update. They're now at version 2.0. Now the change log for this update is absolutely massive and I'll drop a link to it in the description below in the event that you did want to check it out. You might be spending quite a bit of time here though. There's a whole bunch of bug fixes and a whole bunch of improvements. Emulation Station now supports over 130 different systems. They just added in stuff like CPS 1, 2, and 3, and even Wii U emulation with CMU. On top of that, they've got a whole new theme engine and better performance pretty much across the entire board. Lower CPU utilization, faster loading times, and lower latency. This is a huge overhaul. They've also got a great YouTube video showing this update in action, and I'll drop a link to that in the description below. Emulation Station is free, it's open source, and I do recommend checking it out. And if it looks familiar, it's because it's used in RetroPie. It's an amazing application. And speaking about amazing applications, next up we're talking about Nintendo Switch emulation on PC with Ryujinx. And Ryujinx also got a couple of brand new updates. One of them here is to their LDN build, which is their multiplayer build, which is now version 3.1.3. This new version has a number of fixes and also a brand new feature. It fixes an issue where P2P, which stands for subscribe to Mr. Sujano, or peer-to-peer -peer connections would be rejected. It fixes a crash when running Acropolis mods on Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. And it adds a post-processing feature, so anti-aliasing and scaling filters. You can read all about this new version over on Ryujink's Patreon page, and you can also download it yourself. It's completely free. On top of that, the mainline version of Ryujink's also received a number of updates. Version 1.1.651 might get you some minor performance improvements. And if you're on Linux, Flathub builds are now updating again. And speaking about updates, next up we're talking about Nintendo Switch emulation on Android with Skyline. And Skyline received a number of updates today. So if you head to skyline-emu.1 and click on download, and I'll drop a link to it in the description below, you can see they released three different versions today, 2087, 2088, and 2089, at least at the time of filming. On top of that, the paid testing early access version of Skyline, Skyline Edge just got a brand new update, actually a couple of them. They released Edge version 47 and Edge version 48, and this might introduce some performance improvements. Here is inside up and running at a solid 30 frames per second and looking really good. Here's Pascal's Wager up and running at 30 frames per second. Here's Persona 5 Royal up and running at close to 30 frames per second. And there also appears to be a brand new working game, AI the Somnium Files. Skyline Edge changes generally make their way into the mainline build within a couple of weeks once everything has been tested and proven to work pretty well pretty much the exact same schedule as Yuzu. So if you aren't using the paid testing early access version of Skyline, you've got to wait a couple of weeks and you should see these changes. And speaking about changes, next up we're talking about RetroArch and RetroArch version 1.15.0 just released. Arguably one of the biggest updates here is if you're on Mac, RetroArch is now available from Mac on Steam. You do require at least Mac OS version 10.13 or higher. In addition to that for Mac there were a bunch of bug fixes, renderer improvements, and also controller updates, so if you have a DualShock 4 or a DualSense controller, you should be able to just plug and play with it. And on top of that, for Apple users in general, Mupin 64 Plus Next is now available again for iOS, tvOS, and macOS. Uh, Swan Station is available for macOS. Flycast is available for macOS. And PPSSPP is available for iOS, tvOS, and macOS. If you wanted to check out the change log, I will drop a link to it in the description below, and I do recommend checking it out because there is a ton in here. I could have a video that was well over 20 minutes long going over each individual item. But at a really high level here, it's just best if you update RetroArch and enjoy it. And speaking about enjoying stuff, next up here we're talking about Batocera. And Batocera 36 just released, which is also free and open source. So in this update, there's a whole bunch of bug fixes, updates to a whole bunch of different cores, and they've added in a whole bunch of different stuff. For example, support for the RK3328 chip. They've added in Odroid N2L support. And they've also added in the November 28th build of 
Vita 3K. If you wanted to learn more about this, I'll leave a link to the changelog in the description below and also leave a link to this YouTube video in the description below because it showcases Battlesera 36. I mean, you might be interested in this one if you've got a light gun or two, including stuff like the Sindon light gun and even Wiimotes. Next up here, we're talking about the PlayStation 6, and you should probably take this with a complete grain of salt, but there's been a lot of talk about the potential release date of the PS6 today in the news, sometime after 2027, which is still a ways off. I'll drop a link to one of these articles in the description below in the event that you wanted to read more up about the source of this information, but Basically, people have dug into the court documents with Activision, Microsoft, and Sony and determined that sometime after 2027 we'll see the PlayStation 6. Which really isn't that crazy if you think about it. I mean, after 2027 could be 2030, it could be 2028. And the PS5 has already been out for a couple of years. Realistically, I don't really care that much about a PS6 launch date just yet. I mean, 2027, 2028, 2029, whenever it ends up coming out is a number of years away from today. It is still a ways off and a lot can change between now and then. And yes, there is probably going to be a PS6. And yes, we'll probably see it within 10 years. I mean, that's just logical sense. And at this point in time, the PlayStation 5 is just becoming readily available. I would argue that the library for the PS5 really isn't that deep yet anyways. Anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. We talked about a bunch today. Let me know your thoughts about absolutely any of it in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate. Save your state.